The pseudo command allows the user to act as a substitute for another user, gaining their privileges to do things, hence the command's name, which abbreviates the phrase substitute user do. Using sudo is imperative in Ubuntu, as the standard root account is disabled by default. It is strongly recommended in Fedora and other flavors of Linux as well. Users not used to sudo or su see it as an annoyance at first until they realize the sound and secure nature of this excellent Linux feature. Why? Leaving root enabled gives a hacker a decided advantage. They need not guess the administrative user account if they know it is root. They only have to brute force or dictionary the password. However, if root is disabled, they must guess both a valid administrative account and its password, making breaking into the system more difficult, though not impossible. Likewise, if a user forgets to log off and leaves their terminal, a hacker or coworker will not gain a session with root privileges if that user was logged in as a standard user using sudo for administrative tasks. However, if that user was logged in as root, anyone who walks up to their logged in workstation can do major damage to the system. Additionally, if a virus, worm, or malicious script tries to run on a Linux system, it cannot gain necessary privileges without the user typing sudo. This prevents a lot of malware from running without notifying the user. In this way, we might liken it to Microsoft's user account control feature in Vista and Windows 7. However, sudo is a lot more sophisticated and versatile in its Linux applications. The SE command is similar to sudo and can be used with sudo in strange circumstances. It gets its name from substitute user, spoof user, and set user. It's so hard to get folks to agree these days. We could compare SU to Microsoft's secondary logon, fast user switching, or run as features. When using SU, the user enters a new shell with the privileges and permissions of the user they specify, be it root or another. We can combine SU and sudo to enable gain root account access and privileges in Ubuntu. This is not good practice, but if necessary, you can enable the root account and expose yourself to harm with 1. sudo su or 2. sudo password root. Shh, we did a bad thing. Don't worry, you can disable root again with, well, if you use the first method, just exit. And if you use the second method, simply sudo user mad dash p the exclamation point and root. Another nice thing about sudo is that I type in my password, not roots to gain root privileges. So if my account gets compromised, we still have not compromised the root account. By default, if I simply type in sudo in a command without any options, it will ask me for my password and allow me to run the command proceeding after sudo with root privileges. We may also specify other options for both sudo and su. For example, sudo-i-u lady gaga. The command above would give me the privileges of the specified user, whoever that may be. It will ask me for my password to complete this command, rather than Lady Gaga's. In this way, her password is not compromised, but I may still act with her privileges. In Fedora, typing su by itself will put you into a root shell. Remember, Ubuntu is a bit different, but you can do this with sudo su if you are so inclined. Also like sudo, you may specify a user other than root to substitute with su. Example, su commander adama. By default, sudo will cache your password for 5 minutes for each command so you won't have to enter it again for the same command until the cached password expires. You can override this default behavior and force sudo to query you for a password each time by using sudo-k. For a user on the system to use sudo, she must be in the etc sudoers file. To add a new user to the sudoers file from the command prompt, type vi sudo. The first time you run this command, it will ask you to choose an editor. Hardcore Unix folks choose Vim. I opt for Nano as an easy text editor. To give a user sudo privileges for all commands, add their user account to the bottom of the file like so. Username all equals all in parentheses and all. The syntax is like so. 1. The user is the user. 2. The first all means the terminals the user can execute from. The second all in parentheses is the user the user can act as and the last all are the commands the user can run. This is why the installation account has all, 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 all root privileges. You can create aliases to grant sudo privileges for multiple commands like so, command alias text editing, and in this case, the full absolute path to both gedit and nano in user bin. To give a user sudo privileges to only run a single command, we could add them like so, user all equals, and then the absolute path to the program, in this case, user bin gedit. 
Here's another example of giving users limited pseudo privileges with the command alias. If I define a command alias called text editing, and with this alias I define user benji edit and nano, I can assign text editing privileges only to user with user all equals text editing. In addition, if you do not want the user to be asked for their password when running sudo, you can enter a line like so, user all 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 no password colon all. This is possible, but not a good idea. Of course, there is a graphical way to give users pseudo privileges in Ubuntu and Fedora as well. 1. Open the Users and Groups tool from the System Administration menu. 2. Click the user and then select Properties. 3. Choose the User Privileges tab. In the tab, find Administer the System and check it. This will add them to the appropriate groups to give them pseudo privileges. If you've used Ubuntu Linux for long, you've become familiar with um, the sudo command. And if you use Fedora or other flavors of Linux, you probably use sudo or su to you know, have a substitute root account or sub substitute a user. Um, but you know, there's good reasons for using sudo in Ubuntu. Basically what sudo does is it temporarily gives us root privileges to do things that require root privileges, but without us actually having to enable the root account or you know, log in as root. And you can think of it like Microsoft's user account control. You know how when that's turned on, and you know, it's kind of annoying, but yet, you know, it can be a nice security precaution in Windows, like Windows 7 or Vista. If I go to click on something and we're a malicious script or a worm or something, um, I actually have to get the user to click on OK and confirm before I have permission to execute. And that's their user account control. Well, sudo is like that, but it's been around longer, and I think it's a, a bit more, you know, useful or you know, a, a little bit less annoying. But the idea is that you should really never log in as root and kind of leave your root account disabled. It makes your system harder to hack and brute force. Um, it decreases the chances, not does not eliminate, but decreases the chances that your system will fall prey to unscrupulous people. Um, the root account is you know, probably the most dangerous account. So sudo kind of gives us a nice intermediate compromise between logging in as root, um, where we don't have to log in as root, but yet we can still temporarily gain root privileges. Now, by default, when you install Ubuntu, um, you know your install account will be added to the sudoers file, such that you know I installed this system as C Germany. So if I use sudo, um, if I wanted to, I could say sudo and gedit, and you know, I could enter. If you know, in this case, it's cached. Remember, sudo will cache your password credentials for like 15 minutes or so, and then you know you'd have to type in your password after that time. Well, I've already run this before, so I don't have to type in my password, but Otherwise, if you know, it asked me for my password, but that uh, I, I was able to run gedit temporarily with root privileges by using sudo. Okay, um, and that's you know, I'm, I'm I'm part of the, and I mean, I could if I wanted to go to root. I mean, I could do sudo and su. No, in Fedora, I could just say su, and then like use maybe the dash l option, and you know, if I wanted to, I could become root. Um, I don't have permission to do this by default in Ubuntu. If I tried to do that, um, let me do. Notice it'll give me an authentication failure. However, I could sudo su, sort of defeat that. Boom, I'm root. Now, I don't recommend practicing this. This is a no-no. We did a bad thing. Bad, bad. So let's exit back out of the shell. I mean, yeah, you could do that if you had to for one reason or another. You just had to be root. But you don't really ever want to do that. That's that's an Ubuntu that's bad. Even in Fedora, that's bad. But in Ubuntu, it's even worse. That's sort of a cardinal principle of we've just commit, we've just violated a cardinal principle. We've broken one of the Ubuntu commandments. So let's exit and and do our penance, but so to speak. <laughs> so let's clear. So I'm you know, but I don't need the root account. Yeah, I could you know sudo su and gain root, but I don't need to. I can use sudo. That's only if I'm in the sudoers file. What happens if I create a user and he's not a member of sudoers? Well, let's take a look at that. Um, I'm going to do sudo and user add, and I'm going to use the dash d option because he needs a directory so he can log into Genome. So home, and I'm going to call this new guy. That'll be his login and new guy. Okay. We'll make his account. Let's give him a password. sudo password and new guy. <sighs> What's a capital G? And we're going to give him a real easy password, just pass. And 
All right, so let's log out and log in as new guy. Um, I have no problem running sudo. I'm in the sudoers file. What happens if he tries to use sudo? Let's see. So we're going to log out. And now I'm going to log in as new guy. The awesome, super complex, cryptic password of lowercase p-a-s-s. -S. And let's go ahead and here and here. Let me watch terminal. And zoom in a little bit there. Let's see what he does. And I'm going to print my working directory. So I'm in home new guy. Um, I'm going to try to sudo. And let me just launch dedit here. And the password for new guy is pass. But notice it says he's not in the sudoer cell. This incident will be reported. So you know, if he was doing something bad, then the system administrator, you know, he could find out about it or he would know about it. But you know, the problem is he's not in the sudoer cell, and that's good. We don't want just anybody having sudo privileges. Another nice thing about sudo is notice that it doesn't ask for the root password; it asks for the user's password, who's you know in the sudoer's file or who has sudo privileges. So that way each user can have their own password without having to compromise the root password. There's all kinds of wonderful advantages to sudo. But the question is, if we want to, how can we add new guy or how can we give new guy pseudo privileges since by default he does not have them? All right, and there's two ways to do that. They say there's 50 ways to leave your lover. Well, we'll look at a couple of ways. We'll use the graphical interface to give him pseudo privileges. And we'll also do it by editing the sudoers file in a text editor. So I'm going to log out. I'm going to log back in as myself.